Welcome to Archerfield. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at the history of the suburb of Archerfield, including, of course, its most famous landmark, Archerfield Airport. Now, before I get onto the history of the airport, this area here from 1828 was known as the Coopers Plains Convict Station. And in the 1830s, it became an area of cattle grazing to provide meat for the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement. Now, it was named after uh, Dr. Cooper. It's, it's spelled Cowper, but I think it's pronounced Cooper. Coopers Plains was a much, much bigger area in the past. Today, it's more over to the east, over that way. But this area where I am here, all this flat ground was Cooper's Plains, ideal for cattle grazing. The next event to occur in this area was in 1843, when Brisbane's very first purpose-built horse racing track was established here. It existed on where the airport is now. It's about halfway down from here. I'm on, what's the name of this road? Ah, that's where I am. The race course was just down that way there, not far from where a guy called Thomas Grenier would build his house. We're going to talk about him now. Thomas Grenier bought this land for £1,920 in 1855. He was a publican at South Brisbane. He ran the very popular Brisbane Hotel. Now his house no longer exists. It used to be, I'll just put this down here. His house was out that way, more to the north. And it was there even during World War II. The reason why it's not here now is because when the Americans were in charge here, they decided they needed to extend one of the runways and they bulldozed his house. But apparently if they just moved the runway a little bit to one side, the house would have been spared. But anyway, it's gone now. The house that Grenier built was called the Willows. God's Acre Cemetery. This was established by Thomas Grenier on his land as a result of the death of his son Volney, who was out on a fox hunting expedition. He fell from his horse and was killed. He was 16 years old. He's the very first burial here at this cemetery. So how did the name Archerfield come about? Well, there was an Archerfield pastoral station to the south of here. This is what it looked like. It was most likely named after a fellow called Andrew Archer. He leased the house on the Archerfield pastoral station from 1879 to 1880. He was also the bank manager of the Brisbane branch of the Bank of New South Wales. And that was on the corner of Queen and George Streets. There's a later Bank of New South Wales building that's still there today. Now some of the Archer family lived in Tawong and there is today an Archer Street in Tawong in memory of that family. A little bit of a link between Archer Field and Tawong, same family. So just a little detour here to Forest Lake. I'm walking up a hill which leads to the site of where Archerfield House used to be. This was the the main house for the Archerfield Pastoral Station. Now the Pastoral Station didn't extend all the way up north to where Archerfield is now, but the name was used to refer to the area further north when the um, airport was being put in and they needed a name for it and so they used the name Archerfield and that name was applied to the area in 1929. And these trees here date from the 1870s when the house was built. There's some um, avenue of trees leading way way down there up this hill up to the site just up here 
where the house used to be. And look at that one. Wow. It's a little plaque over there. This is a this historic cowrie pine tree was reputedly planted by the Duke of Windsor in 1901. Well, the house would have still been here back then. It burnt down in 1928. I'm standing on the spot where Archerfield House used to be. All right, I better get back to Archerfield. In 1912, this area that is now the airport was being... In 1912, this area here where the airport now is, was being surveyed for an abattoir. And um, obviously didn't go ahead. Here's a map of what the area looked like and how big the abattoir would have been. In 1925, Eagle Farm Airport opens. It was considered to be very boggy and prone to flooding. And so they started looking around for another airport and they found this area. It was in 1929 that the Commonwealth Government took about 260 to 300 acres of this former Grenier land with the intention of building an aerodrome. So in 1931, Archerfield Airport was opened as Brisbane's main airport. However, 1931 was also a year of heavy rains in this area, flooded in places, which is ironic because they moved the airport to here, away from Eagle Farm, because that was prone to flooding. In 1932, a female aviator by the name of Maud Bonney. I think they call them aviatrix back then. Anyway, she left from Archerfield Airport in 1932 to circumnavigate Australia, and she was the very first woman to do so. And then in 1934, another female pilot, this one by the name of Jean Batten, landed here after a 15-day flight, with many stops, of course, from England to Darwin. She eventually came down here. Apparently 20,000 people came to see her land here at Archerfield Airport. When she was getting ready to get out of the plane, a fellow, very well-meaning and in a very gentlemanly manner, offered to help her out of her plane. She refused. Instead, she uh, helped her cat, Buddy, out of the plane. I mean, she'd just flown all the way from England to Australia. She didn't need a man to help her out of the plane. It was also in 1934 that the first air mail service between Australia and England began, again, right here at Archerfield Airport. And just as an aside, the guys who were standing there next to the plane kind of looked like bootleg gangsters. And it was also in 1934 that Charles Kingsford Smith departed from Archerfield Airport, heading for San Francisco. This was to be the very first west to east flight, i.e. over the Pacific, between Australia and the United States. The plane that he had, the Southern Cross, was originally built as a polar expedition plane and it did crash in Alaska. It was then put back together by Charles Kingsford Smith and others and uh, became his signature plane. And just another feather in the cap for Archerfield Airport. It was in 1938 that the very first passenger flight service from Australia to England departed from here. But then things were going to change in a very big way because in the following year, 1939, World War II began and the role that Archerfield Airport was to play would have national significance. The main terminal building, it's an Art Deco style building and it opened in 1941. And amongst everything else, it still operates as a terminal. If you're taking a flight from this airport, you come in here. And the waiting room is just through there, as it always has been. Wow. And actually from in here in the terminal building, you can see the city skyline and it doesn't look all that far away. Now this is really cool. This is the old ticket desk here at the airport.
I wonder if Charles Kingsford Smith ever took a link here. Can't imagine he wouldn't. I'm upstairs on a viewing deck of the old terminal building, being given permission. So though this was an Australian Air Force base, in 1942 the operation of it was turned over to the Americans. Archerfield became an important military base for the Royal Australian Air Force, United States Army Air Forces, Royal Netherlands and the Royal Navy Fleet Arm. So what that basically means is you had the uh, military forces from four different co uh, countries here operating out of this place. There were some single seat, single engine aircraft which were constructed in Buffalo in the United States and then the parts were shipped out here and constructed here in March 1943. General Douglas MacArthur himself paid a visit to this airfield and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the Americans in Brisbane during World War II, here's a video I made about the Battle of Brisbane. Just across the road there on Kerry Road are some maintenance hangars built by the Americans between 1943 and 1944. After the war they were handed over to Australia and they're still there today, being put to very good use as, what are they? Hastings Deering. In 1948, three years after the war ended, this became an RAAF base and they were here until 1955 when they then moved off to Amberley. It was really only in the 1950s and into the 1960s that you get any sort of residential development here in Archerfield. The resident population today is not large, I think it's about six or seven hundred people. And the housing areas are in two main places up here, which is just behind Grenard Road and um, down this way where the arrow is pointing here. These are the two main residential areas and uh, very quiet. Now, if Archerfield wasn't noisy enough, what with the airport and all the traffic around here, in 1964, the Archerfield Race Motorway opened. In 1978, it had a change of name to the Archerfield Speedway. And this is it right over here. In 1998, the Commonwealth Government privatised many airports. A 99-year lease was obtained by the Archerfield Airport Corporation. Today, the airport handles corporate aircraft, private jets, emergency services, charter flights, and there are two flight schools here. The airport also handles a lot of repairs, maintenance, and overhaul business. So it's a very, very busy place. Oh yeah, and the name of the family that got the 99-year lease is bird which is very appropriate my sports teacher back in the eighth grade her name was miss ball and in 2021 archerfield airport won the metropolitan airport of the year award looking at the aerial photographs today you can see how the airport is virtually completely hemmed in by development you can compare it with photographs from 1955 1968 1983 and 2002 oh. There we go. Thanks very much for watching this documentary about Archerfield. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I will see you again on my next walk.